Hey guys, gonna do a tutorial for you on geometry nodes lighting, and I just did one, but this is different because I added it into the LM Studio, and so now it's gonna be in the add-on if you have the add-on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop in a plane. It's a little bit more of a demo, if you will, than anything else. And so I will go ahead and drop in a curved circle because this is designed to go on a curve. I'll jump over into render view. And now I've got a new thing here called add light pen nodes. I'll come over to the geo ooh, geometry nodes workspace. And you just go ahead and click that. And you see like this big blob come in. Uh, it's not really a blob. It's just a bunch of lamps. And you can turn it down to one because it's on a count. Um, bunch of different options here but first thing we're gonna do is just kind of go over some of the functionality here I've been wanting to do something like this for LM studio for a minute all right so like anything else you know we can come in and change all of the different lights and an area light came in so and it didn't show up for some reason that's always annoying but I can switch between the area light and the point light and let's see, did that actually come in correctly this time? Because I've got a transform, like you got count, switch lights, um, light one, you could change it, light two, you could change it, uh, light one, transform, light two, transform, and then there's an animation curve here. So if you were to turn this up, uh, you can time this out and animate it. It's pretty cool. And then there's a translation for the area hood so if you want to bring the area hood light up you can scale that out and then the cone vertices can be changed so you're actually going to change how this looks and of course you know once you change that you can change back um, to point lights if you want no big deal and do whatever you want and let's move on down so we'll bring these cone verts back up to like uh, eight be a little octagon like a little stop sign and now you can change pretty much everything that has to do with it the radius top can go out go in you can change the material of said top uh, the translation here you can move it over up down whatever you want to do the radius for the bottom almost acts like a tree if you will it's pretty cool though but you can change everything to do with it um, Let's go down the depth, so you can change the depth of it. And then of course you can change the scale. But I threw in a scale elements to snap it closed so that you could you know, have your light more visible under here. But if you wanted to uh, change that in any way, shape, or form, you can. And you could even throw a, a glass on that if you want. Now I've got a wireframe for this built in. So you turn on the wireframe, you could change the wireframe material if you wanted to, which I'm getting ready to do because that is uh, atrocious. Let's go ahead and just add a couple new materials. Obviously, I'm going to blue and orange. It's like I'm stuck on these blender colors or something. Okay, so let's go back over, grab the wireframe, switch that to orange, and now you can see that and now you can change uh, the color of everything and then the um, cone material change that because that was looking pretty bad as well we'll just leave it as a gray and then i've already got orange for the wireframe so let's bring that back to orange because i just can't get away from orange so we're going to change it right here Okay, there we go. We'll just go with blue. So whatever. But there's a ton of different options in here. And that's not even like the coolest part. Because if you know anything about curves, you can go into edit mode, hit your X, and delete the vertices. Ha! <sighs> now we come over to the draw pin. My favorite part. And let's go back over into cycles. And now you can start. Well, that should be on the surface. I'm going to leave that one there because that's fun. But now you can start just tapping lamps in anywhere you want. And you can tell um, how this is going to look. It's not too bad, actually. 
you can soften up the spread and everything. If you've got the Light Magic Studio, then you know you can change how the lights are going to look. Uh, you can change pretty much everything, and you can just draw lights in anywhere you want. So I think it's pretty cool. Now another thing, if you did not know it, let's see if I can get back out of there. Another thing, if you did not know, right here, it's going to say what you have selected as an object, and it's going to tell you what's on it. The 3DS light pen is a modifier, so if you don't know necessarily what's on something, you're not in the geometry nodes workspace, because I've got this one kind of pinned, but if I'm over in the material tab and I grab this, I'll see it's a Bezier circle with a 3DS light pen. And I can come over here and be like, oh yeah, that's what I got. Because scenes can get very complex. And the idea of this add-on is to reduce that greatly. So reducing that complexity is a big deal. And then, of course, we can add a camera instantly, make it the active, go into cycles, see how we um, actually want any of this to look. And, of course, we can come down here and find the light we're working with. And I can kind of change the radius here, change how everything looks, change the shadow. Um, funny enough, though, you can change with LM Studio, you can change the light type directly inside of the add-on. So you don't have to come over here. You could just leave it a point if you have LM Studio and just make it really easy on yourself. And if you want, you can click Use Nodes on any one of these and then you know go down into the node setup with that and let's see if I did go ahead and switch that to the area change the area here it's pretty soft right now but we can change how all that looks kind of soften it up a touch I go from square to disk and that'll probably fit better inside of the uh, workspace and there's a, a little shadow coming out, but I mean, you can play around with it, fix it, do what you want with it. Um, for your camera, you'll see you have a camera active in the scene. And so that shows up as well. And let's see, I want to grab this. And of course, I made that the active object. Let's um, <laughs> break out of that. Let's find L camera. There we go. All right. I'm not even using my add on the proper way here. <laughs> I've got a grab button for the camera and then I can make it active again. So that gets a little bit tedious. You had to go back. Apparently making a geometry node set up the active camera is a bad idea. All right. So grab my camera, go back to active. And then we can start playing around with the depth of field and stuff. But anyways, you guys know I've done the tutorials on this specific add-on. Uh, so appreciate you guys watching. Go check that out. You'll be able to go in and draw your lights. So cool. Yep, lots of fun. Anyways, see you guys in the next one. Appreciate you watching.